What up, Fairy fans? Jonathan here with you today, and I've got CJ back with me, and we are going to go through some of the cool new stuff right. that Neuretic is bringing to the table, and we are super excited to dive right in. So, we've got we talked a little bit in our last video about your uh, kind of the history of the company and um, the traditional pollsters you started with, right? We've got the big blue and the blue bantam. Uh, so we'll put a link in the description so you guys can check out that video. But I, you've got some cool new things that are going right. on. So what's going on here? All right. So it actually kind of came out all at the same time. Uh, there was a big push uh, for the idea, the idea behind roller pole spheres and so one of the things that we had to our advantage was that all of our pre-existing customers um, had a modular butt piece. So we talked about that last time. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So uh, although it was not planned, it worked <laughs> perfect. Hey, that's the um, happy accidents, right? Right. Uh, so we were able to add a modular butt piece, which you know now Florida Freedivers is able to sell a roller conversion kit. So instead of having to buy an entire new sphere or even an entire new half of a sphere, right. you really can only buy what you need and the band. And it's an easy way to upgrade. To upgrade. Sphere, yeah. Well, depending on use, right? Um, so that's one of the things that we can talk about is, is roller pull spheres an upgrade? Or are roller pull okay. spheres an upgrade? Good, great question. Right? So um, in certain use cases, in my opinion, it is, right? Um, one of the things about roller pull spheres is they give a greater terminal velocity, but they have a slower initial velocity. Uh, so, so for the non-nerds, let's break that down. Fair. So <laughs> in the beginning of a shot with a roller pull sphere, it's going to be a little bit slower. It takes some time to generate that speed and power, but what it does do is it gives you the ability to have penetration at the end of it. So the reason for that is you see this pretension right here, right? At this point in time, the very second that you start pulling this, it is now under load. We are now at load less than an inch from the back piece. When you have a standard, but, uh, standard band, your band comes, rolls all the way up around here. This is where point zero is. At this point, moving forward, now you can start having some kinetic energy being stored that then is turned into potential energy, which is the energy when it's actually transferring through the water. So what you do is you gain this extra last, you know, foot and a half, almost two feet, where when typical pole spheres start off really strong and start to die towards the end, this one can continue accelerating and will continue with that penetration. So that's one of the things that I like about uh, the rollers is for that long distance penetration shot. The benefit of the standard pole spheres is that it does have that initial pop and that initial strength. The quickness. That out quickness. Of the gate. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So the, the way that that's beneficial is when you have a fish rocked up and you are up underneath the ledge or whatever the case is, and you just need that initial punch to get through it. If you are point blank on a fish a roll, uh, with the roller, um, even out in the open, you'll actually hit that fish and start pushing that fish because it hasn't gotten enough speed yet. And granted, right. towards the end of the shot, if it has enough speed, it'll actually be able to push through. And because we have those super sharp tips, right. it starts to make that incision and works through a fish, so it still works. Right. But, but it works better correct. if you have a little bit more distance between you and the fish and you're using the roller. Correct. Right. So sometimes when you're up underneath the ledge or underneath the rock, you'll actually, you can feel yourself hit the fish, push the fish until the fish hits Something, something right. in the back, and then it'll punch yeah, through the fish. the fish. Right. So that's why I like having a combination of the two. Um, also, for swimming around, right? When you're swimming around with a roller pull spear, it was a new addition for everyone. Mm -hmm. Most people, when they were swimming around with a traditional pull spear, were used to holding the band and swimming around with the pull spear up here. It's a little bit better of a pivot point. Right. So people are now saying, well, I'm going to swim around still holding it here with the roller, but then when that fish comes, you have to reach all the way back. That's one motion. Great point. Bring it here. Second motion. Third motion, fourth motion. Now you're, you took four motions to hit that fish. That fish now had four opportunities to be scooped. Whereas before, you had your hand in the band already. It was one motion up. One, maybe two, depending maybe two, on yeah, how, how far you want to choke yeah. it up, right? Um, so what I recommend with these pole spears is to actually just swim around with it in your hand like this, dangling beneath you. Um, and when you see a fish and you're going to make a dive on the fish, uh, you can actually preload this band right to about here. It doesn't take very much to hold. Um, you right now um, it doesn't take very much to load this and hold it and swim around like this it doesn't burn up a lot of energy and you're definitely still gonna have some movement right, yeah. um, so uh, 
that's that what I brings recommend. you back to that original state of having your band, your hand in the band of a regular full screen. Correct. So now you're kind of limiting two of the steps by just, if you see a fish you're about to make your dive, halfway load, get it like a half load, if mm -hmm. you will, and then that way you're already taking two of those steps out. So that's a, definitely an awesome uh, technique to use on the roller. And something else to add to that is with traditional full spears, people rifle the full spear mm -hmm. when you're loading it so that mm -hmm. make sure that those, the stick stays straight. Well, with these, you already have it running on this side. So you don't need to twist this pull spear. If you twist this pull spear, it's gonna throw it out of whack. You need to keep this loaded in the complete opposite side. So that way band is on top and band is on bottom, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Which is really cool. Because exactly. then it, again, it's pulling the, the back of the pull spear opposingly against each, itself. Mm -hmm. So there can't be any bend, right? Because it's being pulled uh, one way and the other, it's linear, if you will. Mm -hmm. Exactly, um, so. exactly. Cool. And then so, we can talk about terminal velocity, initial velocity, you know, starting speed, stopping speed, penetration, sure. all that stuff. That is not the main reason why I like these rollers. Okay. The main reason why I like these rollers is underneath hunting. And this is something that I guess we could quantify if we spent hours and hours in a lab and things like that, but you would need free fish that were not being fed by right. humans right. and it's just not gonna happen, right? right? So fish. When they're sitting there, they're looking at you, they know that you're there. You using a roller or not doesn't change the fact that these fish recognize that you are present and you are hunting them depending on eye contact and all these other things, sure. which is a whole nother segment we can talk about. Okay. Okay. So, uh, but with the initial uh, pull spear pop on a traditional, that sends waves through the water. That immediately is sending off to this fish, something's coming after me. Think about it. when fish first move, you hear that yeah. boom. Right? Yep, absolutely. So he says, oh no, this thing's coming for me. And so they'll move their head or the whatever, and you'll glance that fish, or you'll see them like, you know, matrix, yeah, your spear. Yeah. You will see that. I've had it happen. So <laughs> what happens with the roller is that it's soft and quiet. When you first let it go, it doesn't make that initial pop. It doesn't give off that warning signal to right. that fish. So that fish kind of stands there and says, what are you doing? You're getting closer, you're getting closer. Why? You know, what's, what's going, going on? on? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. by the time this thing, has gained speed now, it's like having a runner starting at a, at a standstill right. and you being able to start 10 yards back and now you start yeah, running right. and he's not allowed to start until you pass that line. Well, guess what? You're going to blow right by him. Correct. And so similarly to this, that fish doesn't realize yet that it's in danger. It knows that you're in the area. It knows right. that you're hunting it, but you haven't made that tail kick or, or band pop. Right. And so it's still cool being at a distance away from you. So by the time it realizes that something is happening, it's already too late because that now pull spear is gaining and getting closer and already has momentum. Right. And now that fish still has to gain momentum off the block. Right. And coupling that with the fact that this is getting a longer range mm -hmm. than your typical pull spear, both of those things combined makes for the perfect mutton hunter. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> right? Exactly. So if you've all been in the water before and you've tried to hunt muttons, especially on a pull spear or sling, they are super elusive. They're very like quick and speedy, right? Um, and they're super jumpy in the water. So they're game things. masters. Man. Yeah, exactly. So them along with kubaras, um, the only difference is obviously kubaras are always down to rock up, whereas muttons will just run forever. forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, or we'll even take that up one notch more, right? Hunting mutton is great, but what about those wahoo, right? Yeah. We yeah, now hold sure. the world record. Uh, James Adams has the world record wahoo on the bantam. And so, you know, the same thing happens with the wahoo. Wahoo will get in, they'll get curious, Right, but sometimes you need that little bit of extra, right. um, you know, range, mm -hmm. and also for them not to realize that something's happening before it's a little bit too late. Right. Whereas with a spear gun, right, that pop, that spear has already hit them, right, when that pop happens. Exactly. Whereas with a pull spear, it's just going to take some time. So speaking of traveling and going to the Bahamas and really kind of traveling all over, um, we've felt that there has been a need for a little bit smaller of a pull spear and a way to kind of break these things down and travel better with them. So uh, CJ and the team at Neuretic has been able to help us out and they uh, came up with this eight foot uh, bantam, right? So instead of the 10 foot, so it's only two feet shorter, but it breaks down into three 24 inch sections, right? Mm -hmm. With a two inch injector rod and you have the option to put the uh, roller or the traditional band on it. And we've been doing really well with them. People really like the idea that it's just a little bit smaller um, because that's, you mentioned earlier, I think it was maybe in our last video, how, you know, if you're diving 40 feet or deeper, you use the 10 foot. Correct. And most of our guys in the Bahamas are not diving 40 feet, right? Right. So it makes 
perfect sense for us to shoot a six, seven, eight foot pole spear. And having that eight foot pole spear in a beast of a you know pole spear like the Noretic, uh, either Big Blue or the uh, Bantam, it just makes makes all the difference when you're trying to get that fish out of the hole or if you're diving in that shallow water. So. Yeah. So like you said, for travel purposes, on our standard models, they are 36 inches plus connectors. So we're looking at realistically 38, 30, 38 39 inches, okay. right? Okay. Um, depending on whether it's the Big Blue or the Bantam because there's a little bit difference on the length there. Right. Um, but with that said, that's not going to fit in your carry-on. Right. So carry-ons have to be less than 28 inches. Right. Um, and so we wanted people to be able to carry them on. The tip situation, we might have to hide those, you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but what we wanted to do is make it uh, for backpackers too. We get a lot of people over in uh, Indonesia and the mm -hmm. Philippines and things like that. Okay. And so when we're going over there, you're traveling light, and you want to be able to throw something in your backpack and do a shore dive. Right. It's perfect. Um, and then so bringing back to that, you know, shallow, you know, thirty foot diving, especially in the Bahamas, you know, small coral head. Right. Some people said, you know, well eight foot, you know, or six foot or seven foot, that's just too small because I'm not going to get that range. Mm. Well, that's where the, the roller comes into play. You might be shrinking some of that size on the pole spear, but you're gaining it with the, the roller uh, connection point. Um, and then again, it lets you get up underneath and lets you do everything that you would need to do because we all know when you're in those 15, 25 foot coral heads shooting hogs and muttons, for whatever reason, that's when Kuberas like to show up. And big ones. And big ones. <laughs> and they'll stare at you. You know, you'll be you'll be in a rock looking at, you know, a, a small tiger grouper or a yellow fin or whatever, right? Trying to get it. And you'll come out of the, the, the rock um, and you'll hear people grunting, grunting, grunting from the surface. And sure enough, there's this 50, 60 pound Kubera that's, you know, doing the fin wave. And, and he's staring at you over your shoulder. And as soon as you turn around, he's gone. He's gone. But occasionally you get one that's a little hungry. You know, maybe hasn't eaten and wants to know what do you have on the end of your spear because I'm going to take it. Right. Um, you know, lobsters, especially when you're shooting those lobsters and they start to squeak, eh, 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 yeah. the Kuberas come oh. in and they want to eat it. So it's been awesome, right? We, we've had uh, the, the Bantam roller and the Big Blue roller, uh, both of products that we have absolutely fallen in love with. Um, and I think we're actually getting our hands on one of these now, right? As yes. a team, we're going to get our hands on one and we're going to go play with some and, and shoot some uh, firsthand, which is going to be awesome for... Uh, our sales staff as well as our customers, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's always good to be able to tell our customers firsthand experiences that we have. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. One of the things that I love about working with you guys is that you are on the ground level. You are talking to hundreds and hundreds of customers a week, yes. you know, <laughs> some buy, some don't, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, but what you do here is every little complaint, every little want every little need yeah. and you know i only speak to so many people so having uh info tree right at yeah. ground level yeah, yeah, uh sure. you know perspective is able to help me develop you know i would not have really seen the need for that travel eight foot phantom that you guys asked for right uh, if you guys hadn't been able to talk with all these people regularly and so that certainly helps me right uh you know when we're talking about the design of the pole spear from the beginning you know i was talking with you you know, every Way other week, when, yeah, yeah, four yeah, years ago, and I was like, well, what do, what do you think about this, and what do right. you think about that, yeah. right? And so again, it was just being able to bounce ideas off of someone who's entrenched in the industry and talk to all of you. You know, it's it's really important. Yeah, and that's great. I mean, that's why we love having you know hearing you guys uh, talk about in the comments and just all over social media. You guys have done a fantastic job of letting us know what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong, and how we can make ourselves better. Uh, and that's something that uh, you know. We as a company, I definitely know that you guys do as well, is mm -hmm. you take that feedback to heart um, and improve upon it. Don't just, right. we don't just sit in our <laughs> room and sulk about all the negative comments. We take them and we say, okay, is there any merit to this conversation or this comment? And if there is, how can I be better? Exactly. And so that's what I think makes a great company. So awesome. CJ, thanks again very much for, for joining us on the channel. Uh, if you guys did find value in this content, please be sure to leave us a like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we'll be seeing you guys in the Thank you so much for watching guys. If you guys did find value in this video, please make sure you share this video with your friends and of course subscribe. We'd love to uh, hear what you guys have to say if you guys want to leave a comment in our comment section below. Also, check this video out. It's one of my favorites.